These guys are going to be fun. Yep. I'm fully expecting Jeremiah to come just sprinting across the cage at this point. Again, one more time, this is a catchweight bout at 160 pounds. And Jeremiah Scott taking his time. Interesting. I, I thought he was going to come out harder than this. Well, and I think maybe even the jog around the cage is kind of his way of expending nervous energy, but settling into the fight, not running straight into a guy who has the boxing of Zach uh, and, and running into a hard shot. And I believe this fight, uh, I believe that Zach was originally supposed to be taken on someone else, and that's why they got the extra five pounds to catch weight. So he didn't have to cut, cut, cut as much weight either. So both guys probably a little more relaxed than normal because they had to cut five less pounds than they normally would for them. Yeah, Zach was you know, extremely prepared. So even taking a fight on short notice, but the, the thing is, is again, the weight cut. Sometimes, if, you know, you only have 10 days notice before a fight, cutting that extra weight. A lot of guys start their cut at that point two or three weeks before. So better just to accept a fight at a catch weight than to come in and say you're going to guarantee a certain weight class and then miss weight when you show up. 100%. Jeremiah's doing a good job of just trying to control distance and frustrate, you know, uh, Zach. Throwing shots, moving around. Kind of nullifying the fact that Zach has reach. Zach changing levels now for a shot. Wow. Hit an Iranian lift after the double. He's going to turn the corner here by popping the... Now explain what, what, what Jeremiah might be looking for. He might be looking for the upside down triangle. Yeah, a lot of times you do. Uh, you know, that's a position that happens a lot of times in folk style wrestling. You go over the top and you kind of trap it. You try to stall from here. But obviously there's no stalling in this position for uh, us in MMA. So you, a lot of times guys will, will hook up that reverse triangle. Now he's probably going to slide down for a knee bar. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for it. He's kind of a position for that. And there he goes for the knee. Interesting position, but Jack looks, Zach looks very, very patient. Yeah, as he's stacking it, trying to push the hips down. And right now, it's just not doing anything silly to get reverse. He's in great position on top because he got the leg crossed over. It's going to make it very difficult until Jeremiah pushes him out. Now he's able to get a closed guard. But right now, closed guard against the cage. This is not a great position. And now Zach's moving him towards there. This is a great position for the top guy, Zach, to be able to inflict damage. That makes it very hard to be mobile in your guard when you're down here. Now the legs are getting opened up. He's going to be able to drive hips forward, Zach is, and rain down shots. And we still have quite a bit of time here in this first round. Uh, just, just about two minutes here in this first round. So he's got a lot of time to work from that position and make an impression in the judges' minds. Yep. Wow. Good and scramble. You know Good job of Jeremiah getting out of it. That was a bad position to be in. Bad spot of the cage and how he was addressing it. But he was able to run up the cage. Basically almost grand beating a way out of it, up to his feet. A little, little low kick there. So we had a little bit of a low blow there from Zach. I think, I'm sure Jeremiah is fine. He's going to take a little breather there for a moment. As he should, it's his right to do so. And Zach's going to get a warning from our referee. Yeah, unintentional at first. I mean, there's times where very obvious isn't intentional unintentional but here it was an unintentional growing attack and this happens a lot when one fighter is a southpaw and one is a traditional stance correct yeah, it does and here in that situation it was just a simple inside kick both guys were actually standing southpaw at that moment and uh just a missed time shot that's a problem with the inside leg kick uh and especially the cross kick that you're talking in an open stance um if a guy moves in a direction forward or forward back, back it causes a groin shot that's why you know i teach a lot of my guys and myself included we aim for the knee or lower so that way we know it doesn't slide up and hit anything that causes yeah. you know an unintentional loss of a point beautiful jab yeah back to the action now zach touching him now jeremiah moves a lot oh nice spinning back fist yeah Jeremiah likes this bigger cage. This is a 30-foot cage. Yeah, he uses his feet, moves a ton. You know, even when it's, you know, not necessarily in range to attack or strike. And Zach is trying to march him down much more traditional style. So he's strafing to his right. And then Zach looking to go ahead and probably get his jab to be active right now. Oh, hard check kick oh. down right here. Hey, before that, I'll tell you what, Zach checked the kick, and that was legit. And for people who've never felt what a real check shin to shin is, it's going to change your life. 
Absolutely. You know, and a lot of times, too, in fighting, how many times I'll throw a kick and someone checks it, I almost kind of guarantee that's the last time I'm throwing that kick. <laughs> All right, you know how to check it properly. I ain't tossing that around yeah. anymore. Jer Jeremiah just landed a great, great body kick to Zach. And that's a, that's the thing that was open with both fighters standing, one yes. southpaw, one traditional. But they are moving back and forth a lot. Jeremiah moves the southpaw a lot. He does. And uh, right now, his movement is starting to slow down. Those big, huge movements exploding from the outside. They're unpredictable, and they're nice. It's almost like a change-up. But eventually, they're fatiguing. They take a lot of energy. And you can see that the style that Zach is using is less energy uh, abusive. He's able to, you know, look nice straight right hand, sprawled on the takedown. His feet are under him, throwing the jabs. Yeah, he's less unpredictable, but much easier to keep this style up. He's, using, he's using his energy economically. Much more efficiently. And you just do a nice right hook to the body and those jabs. Those jabs are effortless, and they just really nice eat shot. people up. Good first round. Uh, excellent first round. We saw a little bit of everything, didn't we? We saw, we saw uh, we saw a takedown attempt. We saw some fishing for submissions, a scramble. We saw kicks. We saw punches. We saw, even saw a groin shot. So we've seen everything. Yeah, a little bit of groundwork. Yeah, it was a great first round. And also, too, I like watching the two different styles. Jeremiah Scott dancing around, moving, exploding from far distance in and out. Almost more of a karate style type of uh, Machida. You know, big movements. Now, we saw the takedown from Zach. I don't know if you noticed, but Jeremiah went straight to a tie plum position when he defended that takedown. Yeah, he was trying to go ahead and grab it, I think, which is underestimated. I mean, that's a great way if you can stop someone with your forearms, but if they drive in through that double, they're going to go ahead and get it more often than not. And a couple nice shots landed for Jeremiah on the outside. They're just because he's, he's very unorthodox, moving big movements in and movements out, those things can land. Once again, Zach Chisola and Jeremiah Scott here in the second of three five-minute rounds. Eric Apple joined by Frank Mir here at XMMA in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, nice shot. Oh, oh big right hand there. Hand. Good defense there for uh, Jeremiah Scott. He almost tried to wrap the guillotine, which until you get your hips back, I'm not a fan of. Now the fighters are talking, Zach telling the referee that Jeremiah is grabbing the gloves, and Jeremiah is responding to the referee as well. And this is what we talked about. Is, is Jeremiah's movement going to slow down a little bit, and Zach's going to be able to get hold of him? Yeah, and Zach is very efficient, very comfortable wrestling. He has his hands locked here. Let's we'll see if he gets his hips in front and just twists Jeremiah down the cage. If he can drive his left hip in there in front, he can block it off and almost kind of do like a, you know, uh, an arm throw with the underhook. There, he's got his hand up. Oh, but he allowed him to release through. Looked like he was in a clinch. Nice knee in there short. But Jeremiah did a good job of getting his back off the cage and getting this back out in the open territory. We are just about a minute and 10 seconds through this second of three five-minute rounds. And Jeremiah Scott back on his feet moving, and he's looking to put those hands on his opponent, Zach Jusol. Yeah, Jusol right now. At this range, this is his fight. Much you know, longer reach, more of the boxing style. Jeremiah's losing the advantage he had when he was moving big movements on the outside and bursting in. But now those body shots, a couple bit of the grinding, you know, they add up, they're fatiguing. You know, that's why sometimes guys will do things in the gym. I'm like, hey, that's great and it works. But Only how so often long. can you keep it going? You know, like, how yeah. long can you do that maneuver? Double leg by Zach Dusola. Oh. oh, and Jeremiah took his shot with that guillotine and it yeah. didn't pay off. Yeah, you know what? It's a home run to go for that, but I still feel like it's too early in the fight for him to have gone for that without really making sure it was secure because now he misses the guillotine and he gave up the takedown that essentially he stopped from Jackson Joe Sola. He was able to stop it and stuff the shot, and now he's on his back, and this is not an area you want to rest. And in so, the eyes of the judges, you're not doing well. So we got two minutes and 45 seconds left here in the second round, and he's on his back with his opponent squarely between his legs in his guard. So it's going to be tough for him to get up from this position. Yeah, you know what? I think he's going to have to be scrambly and explosive. So it's going to take some energy. He's going to get ready. If I, I would probably dare to see him drive shit across, Big elbow. go to his feet, and then push up. Yeah. Big elbow in the guard there from Zach. Now Zach just needs to keep driving forward. 
little veteran things there, like covering the face with the hand, yep. impeding the breathing there of Jeremiah Scott. But Zach needs to, his corner should be calling out for him to work uh, Scott to the cage so that those big elbows would be hard to throw. You can't throw those in your head stuffed against the cage. Yeah, there were two minutes to go here in the second round. Frank, I want to ask you a question. You talked about pushing your opponent to the cage. But a lot of fighters now are really good at using the cage to get up. They are. So that's not always true anymore. No, no, yeah. And as you move towards the cage, it could be your friend or it could be your enemy, depending on who knows how to use it. If you're on top and you know how to keep your opponent's hips on the ground, absolutely move him towards the edge of the cage. If he keeps opening guard and trying to walk. Look at this. Fishing for the submission off his back. That was a great hand explosion. Domination from Zach really was getting in there, throwing down some heavy blows. But uh, Jeremy Scott was able to slide off of one. It almost took his back. Nice armbar attempt. Open guard. Yep. And now the, here's the point, though. Zach Jusola is really, really, you know, for, for the most part, he's got to take this round in the eyes of the judges. There's no way he can lose this round unless something crazy happens here right. in the last few seconds. Big reversal. Maybe fighting out of the Smith real hard. Oh. Nice. Right, moving to the side, side now. Yep, but he's going to be able to... Jeremiah Scott's feet are on the cage, so if he hip heights and runs hard, it's going to be hard for uh, Zach to hold him down. Just nice. like that. Good scramble there, but Zach seemed to be prepared for it. He was. He was ready. He didn't overcommit. Floated on top of him is what we would say, you know, in the corner. Float him, and then as soon as he established position, drive him over again, break him down, and now he reversed his back on top position. So that's a great exchange there for Zach, because there Jeremiah uses his energy, explodes, does the right thing, tries to make something happen, but it comes away with nothing but still bottom position. And this is, you know, most likely got to be an easy 10-9 round for Zach on top, controlling his opponent that he slowed down with 10 seconds to go here in the second of three rounds. Yeah, this round makes it easy to judge. First round, you know what? It was a difficult round just because of the movement. You know, Jeremiah landed some good shots to snap Zach's head back. Zach landed some shots. Uh, but that second round, much easier to be a judge. 100%. And that's never an easy job, or that's never a job I'm, no, I, I, I ever envy. No. I think most of us that are fighters yeah. don't ever want to but you know, the, become judges. The funny thing is, is people like us should be the judges. You know what? You're absolutely right. to be accurate, but we don't want to be. No, because you know how much you know, close decision can really yeah. affect the trajectory of someone's It can change career. someone's life. Yeah, it can, totally. As we, see our fighters, as we see our fighters in the corner, we see Zach with that double leg. And it's a great spall by Jeremiah yeah. Scott. And he immediately went for that guillotine, and then he sat back for it. But man, even before he sat back for it, he had the neck. Well, it, it just needed to cinch it up a little bit tighter. And when you see him pull it, the grip was a little loose. Yeah. He did everything from the shoulders down perfectly. Yeah. Blocking it, pulled his hips back, wraps the neck loose, and pulled it. Should have made sure it was tighter, and obviously he, he learned that himself. As we see some more ground and pound here from, from a half guard. But, I mean, the sprawl and the hip move. The reaction perfect. time was amazing. That was great. He did everything right. Yep. It's just that guillotine making. Hey, it's MMA. Yep. You can do ten, nine things right, and the tenth one is the reason why you're on the bottom. All right, third of three five minute rounds here at X MMA, Greenville, South Carolina, here at the Ball Secure Wellness Center. And Jeremiah Scott is coming out like he has something to prove because he does. There's a good chance he's down two to one, or it could be one to one. But either way, he needs to win this round if he wants to win the fight. And it changes the parameters of how this fight's going. Right now, in the first round, especially, Jeremiah was running and making Zach chase him. Now, Jeremiah's in a position where he has to chase. He's going to run into shots. Because Zach could beat me to it, man. <laughs> yeah, good. And just, a, just, a, just a standard, straightforward double leg, gets the takedown, and he comes around, and he, and he turned the corner to finish it. Yep, and it's easier to take someone down who's walking into you than walking backward. I mean, watch any folk-style wrestling match. If you walk backwards, yep. they call you for stalling. And the reason why, it's hard to take a guy down who's moving backwards. Sure. So the fact now that he has to move forward to make something happen is going to make it easier for Zach to get the takedowns is what's what we just saw right there. And again, you, know, you were talking about guys knowing how to use a cage. Jeremiah Scott doesn't. I don't think he probably has a cage in his room. Or you know, but he, he he has pushed off it once or twice yes. in his scrambles. But, but you're right. As far as scooting his butt to the yes. cage again, you know, he hasn't been able to do that. No, he doesn't know how to break guard, get his back to the cage, yeah. so that he can get his head above and hips up and get out of there. And that just might be good instincts on his part. What he did before. I think so. Look at oh. this. Grimace, but the elbow looks like it's out. I mean, he is dangerous off his back. Yeah. 
Great jiu-jitsu. Yeah, showing Great well rounded this. Just couldn't get the finish. Zach was able to get the arm out. But hey, you know what though? I'm a judge and I'm watching this fight. It's yes. pretty close right now. I'm starting to edge towards Jeremiah as far as right now. Oh, that was doing more damage. That arm bar, especially the facial expression of Zach, showed that, hey, that thing was tight. Now, he got out of it. Now he's back on top. So you're going to have to do some more. But that starts to close the gap. Yeah, it sure certainly does. Now, Zach's just going to work from the guard here. Just staying busy, peppering little shots. Nothing gigantic as of yet. We have two minutes and 40 seconds or so left here in the third of three mounds. And the ref is going to stand him back up, get him back to the feet. Really? Interesting. That was a that was extremely a quick, strange. That was a, that, was a, that was a quick stand up. All right. So who's the local guy again? <laughs> well, sometimes, you know, we, we saw a lot, a lot of work from inside the closed guard in the second round. Saw it again here in the third round. So maybe the ref assumed it wasn't going to go anywhere. Yeah, but still, I was pretty busy. Pretty quick. Just, yeah, OK. We pretty both quick. established pretty quick stand up. That was a quick stand up. <laughs> I've seen worse. Oh! Nice body shot. Nice body shot. And that just, you know, the skills you develop when you train pure boxing. You know, in MMA, in kickboxing, a lot of us are headhunters because of the knees. Yes. You know, so jab, cross, hook to the body, to the head. The body shot is definitely much, you know, worked on and established in pure boxing. So the guys like Zach who work a lot of pure boxing, if they can bring that over and be able to avoid, you know, uh, the, the knees to the head or any kind of chopping elbows and work the body, it can be a great asset in what you just saw right there. Sure. Now, Jeremiah was moving around a lot in the first round, but he's definitely slowed down after being on his back quite a bit here in the last two rounds. He's got a minute and 30 to do something to take this fight back. Oh, big body shot again. More body shots from Zach. Those are beautiful shots to the body. Yeah, that's showing, you know, that's showing some high-level boxing. And you know, in a body shot, you know how it is. Just, you can take a shot to the head, and 30 seconds later, if you're still in the fight, you know, you can shake those cobwebs out. You take a bad body shot, and, like, you get some of it back. <laughs> you never get it all back. Yeah, 100%. Zach is really, really starting to control this fight now. He's the one controlling the center of the ring. He's pushing the action, landing punches and kicks. Yeah, marching forward. That was a nice little look away, uh, spin back uh -huh. knuckle. I like it. Being tricky. Some people can make the spinning back fist and elbows work. Yeah, then those are kind of uh, Hail Mary shots. Sure. They, you know, they land and you look like a, a superstar. Oy. Or sometimes you miss and you just get dragged <laughs> down because you gave up your back and you look sil silly. 30 seconds to go. Can Jeremiah Scott pull a rabbit out of the hat here in the third and final round to find a victory? And again, walking in. Prime time for Zach to hit a shot. Oh, interesting. Jeremiah going for the takedown. Not a bad idea. Now, no. can he win the round like this? Maybe not. But still, definitely a good impression of the minds of the judges. For, the, for this to be the last thing they see, yeah. him on top, yeah, inside you know, now. He has a takedown. He so far has attempted zero punches. Yeah. Yeah. There's a half, maybe. That doesn't, you know, I mean, for me, for a judge to even think that that gives a round to a guy, I'd have to have a strong talking to you about what fighting's about. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Like I said, you know, it's, it's about putting some of the minds of the judges. Sometimes a lot of fighters and their coaches believe if you win the first 60 seconds yes, and yeah. the last 60 seconds of a round, you got it. It does. It does have influence on judges and how the perception of on who's winning that fight. Well, we actually finally had a fight that went to a decision. We don't know who won that fight. The judges are going to get together. Remember, here in South Carolina, of course, we use a boxing 10-9 system. For those of you at home who don't know how it works, we judge 10-9 based on striking, grappling, and octagon control, or I'm sorry, cage control. Let's take a look at some of these replays. Nice spinning back kick. Yep, nice little elbow block there. Here's yeah, when he just ran into that shot. Double leg takedown, he tried to spin out, but Zach controlled the hips, he couldn't ball over. There was a beautiful left hook to the body. And hey, uh, Jeremiah Scott trying to land one himself, but was able to turn into a nice clean double. Gets probably one of the smoothest takedowns of either opponent right now in the yeah. fight. Yeah, you know, it, it wasn't, definitely threw him off guard with that takedown. Yeah. He did. 
I think that wasn't expecting it. You know, most of the time you need more than a takedown to, to win the fight, especially when you're down like that. So guys are more worried about the, you know, Hail Mary or any kind of big, you know, spin elbows, overhand shots that are trying to get that knockout. Uh, most guys going for the shot. That's the guy who's winning who's just trying to make sure he solidifies it. So judges are using their abacus to put all those scores together? Yeah, you know what? That's always told you it's a close fight when it takes a second to get the scores in. <laughs> uh, everybody liked it when I said abacus, especially Bill Ziegler. He told me how much he loved when I said abacus on the show. He thought that was hilarious. So I knew I had to bring that one back. Got to add up those scores. Remember, 10 9 system, you got to keep those scores. And the athletic commission is going to double check everything before we announce it here. Our fighters are jawing a little bit in the ring. In the cage. Probably not the best idea. I don't know they're talking about something that happened as far as the, one of the groin kicks or grabbing the gloves. Well, they seem to be okay with each other. Doesn't seem to be having too much of a problem. We do have our official particulars. We're going to throw it in to our ring announcer. His name is Big Mo. We got a little bit of beef going on here. We got guys in the stands. Let's throw it into our ring. Big Mo's got our got our decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three full rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard for the official decision. All three judges have ruled this a unanimous decision victory for Zach the Juice, Juice Sola. Well, not too much of a surprise. I feel like Zach the Juice winner, Zach. Hey, obviously starting off right at the back, you were marching him down. A lot of footwork, big movements at the beginning. How much was that throwing you off the first round? You know, uh, it made me chase a little bit, made me stay calm. I couldn't really find my rhythm because he wasn't giving me nothing to find like a typical fighter that threw me off. But I could feel him slowing down. Like you hit him with like one liver shot, two liver shots, little body shots, and uh, start respecting and all the little tricks go out the window. I caught him with a good jab lunging in and that went out the window. Now one of the things he did great off his back there was that arm bar attempt. It looked like it was close. How close was it? Man, you know what? Uh, the arm bar was close. I was pulling out and had something else going on my collarbone, a little pop there, but ended up getting out of it. And props to him, it was deep, it was tough, but I was winning. I couldn't, like, I couldn't go down like that, my brother. Then in the end, it seemed like he had to switch gears, and now he was moving towards you. But those body shots really paid a factor in the fight. Was it part of the game plan or something you saw as the fight was going on? You know what? I'm always a body shot guy all the time, and I wait for the double pillar block. He had an exceptionally good double pillar block. Usually I can work in between it. But when anybody goes high, you know there's always an opening. So if you got good eyes, good power, good speed, good angles, you can take advantage of stuff like that. Thank anybody when you're done. Man, I want to thank Lance here, man. I want to thank my boy over here, Dane. I want to thank everybody at Extreme Couture, 10th Planet, Strikers Only, my, my beautiful fiance, Catherine, who holds me down, my daughter up in Minnesota. And shout out to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior who saved my life last year, born again, Christian, baptism of fire. The only reason I'm here today, and now I got focus in my life. Your winner, Zach Jusola!